Hello fellow traders and welcome to the Elliott Wave course module brought to you by Lionheart Elliott Wave Analysis. My name is Richard and I will be your host for this session. This module will come with a nice setup that you can use for your own trading or to perfect your current strategy. Besides the Elliott Wave principle, it will also include Fibonacci mathematical measurements, consolidation areas, points of interest, and vibration levels, but also divergences, those differences in the price action, and it will include much more, so stay tuned. Before we get started on the Elliott Wave principle and how it can be applied to trading, you should know that the following material will contain the basic usage of the Elliott Wave strategy and the implementation of it. Let's move a bit further and go over some important details together so that we can get a better understanding in regards to this trading concept. Now, the Elliott Wave principle is a complex way of analyzing the financial markets. It reveals how traders' sentiment works, how people behave and the mass psychology behind buying and selling the assets. Many believe that it is in fact one of the main laws of the universe and that it can be applied to almost every aspect of our lives. Well, <laughs> we're not gonna go that far, but instead we're going to discuss how this exercise in probability can help an elitician to identify the market structures and to anticipate the most likely next moves within the price action on the charts, of course. This is by far the most reliable leading analysis tool that a trader can have in his, her arsenal and can be an asset to you. The ace in the sleeve, if applied correctly, of course. The technique is known to be very subjective among traders. There are different types of approaches to this and traders tend to start using it and then give up because they don't, you know, not everyone succeeds in understanding the concept. Every trader is different in his, her training style and has his own training setups. So it will be up to you to adapt this concept uh, to your training strategy, to your actual trading strategy or change completely, that's up to you. Anyway, uh, it is recommended that uh, you, you know you start with the basics and cover every every step uh, because you want to keep it simple in the beginning in order to avoid any potential headaches and you know then after your your knowledge and your uh, you know learning hunger increase then you may choose to see how far the rabbit hole goes and explore or apply you know the more advanced techniques. With this module, we will discuss the structures of the Elliott Wave concept, the types of waves, cycles, but most importantly, how to start counting, because this is the main problem that traders have. They don't, they're not counting the right way. And obviously, we're gonna see how we can apply together the techniques on the actual charts. So, there will be examples on the, on the course as well. This module will be split at one point into two categories a basic and then an advanced one. So sit back and enjoy the ride, it's gonna pay off. All right, so we spoke a bit until now about the wave principle and what it can do. Let's take a step back into time and see why this trading technique intrigues so many people. We're not gonna go in depth with his entire history. Instead, we're gonna focus on the main aspects. So first things first, who was this man? Ralph Nelson Elliott was an American accountant who studied 75 years worth of stock market data, mostly indexes, um, from yearly and all the way down to 30 minute charts. He discovered that the stock market actually follows natural laws which can be measured and predicted using Fibonacci sequence or golden ratio. His theory intrigued many, especially after the book entitled The Wave Principle was published in 1938. So you see, this amazing theory and pattern is still being used by traders these days. Well, that being said, here are some important bullet points to be used as ground rules when you're using Elliott Waves. There are two choices that you can make when applying the Elliott Wave theory on your charts and when, you're, um, when you count the waves, basically. Uh, simple one and advanced. The simple technique implies counting the waves normally and the advanced implies going more technical and recognizing the impulsive or corrective structure types. Impulsive or motive waves come in three types, extensions, ending and leading diagonals. Corrective waves, however, they come in five, zigzags, flats, triangles, double and triple threes. We will start with a simple approach and then move towards the advanced one and really dig in. Time for facts, rules and bullet points. Price action moves in patterns and usually has the magic number set to three and five. A bullish or bearish Elliott cycle is formed out of three impulsive waves, 
number one, three, and five, and two corrective waves, number two and four. These corrective waves, as the name implies, they correct the impulsive one and three. And then after one, two, three, four, five, then we have, of course, the trend correction legs, A, B, and C. So if you don't want to complicate things, you can apply the basic usage of the theory. One, two, three, four, five, A, B, C. Simple, right? But it's not that simple. If you aspire for an accuracy higher than 50 or 60%, then I would definitely recommend the advanced technique. Impulsive or corrective waves are usually formed out of other Elliott waves, as they are fractal by nature. What I mean by this is the fact that you will find an Elliott wave within a larger Elliott wave. So if you shrink down uh, the time frame, let's say, for example, if you're on the weekly, daily chart, etc., then you can shrink it down. Uh, and you will find that on a four-hour chart or hourly chart or whatever, you will find that that one wave can actually be formed out of other Elliott waves. That's what I mean by fractal. Impulsive wave three is usually the largest, but sometimes number five can be just as strong. This is because traders take profit on the third impulsive wave. And then after the fourth retracement wave, they get in again on the fifth impulsive wave. Or simply put, traders got used to the Elliott method, and this is why the fifth wave tends to have a bigger impact on the charts lately. Corrective waves two and four can have two forms, simple, formed out of three moves and complex formed out of five moves and if wave two is simple then wave four will be a complex one and vice versa most of the times but not always the c corrective wave is also impulsive wave number one abc correctives can provide a strong gain as well depending on the size of the impulsive waves now let's move a bit towards the wave numbering and the default measurements Wave one is either a simple trend correction or an impulsive wave for another cycle. Wave two is a correction of wave one, and it usually does not retrace more than 61.8 on the FIBS. Wave three is the next uh, wave, impulsive wave, and usually is the largest impulsive wave, which can offer a 100% or even 161.8% target. Fibonacci expansion tool is specifically used in order to measure the take profit target for this wave. Wave four is a correction of wave three and it usually retraces around 38.2 or even 50% on the FIBS of wave three. Wave five is the last impulsive wave and can be quite big sometimes, as big as three, or depends, depends what type of um, wave we have, or what type of uh, motif wave, is it uh, some type of uh, extended one or not. So yeah, after this one, two, three, four, five uh, waves, then we all obviously have the trend corrective legs, which are A, B, C. So let's start with A. A is a corrective wave, and the most it can actually go is towards the beginning of uh, five. Wave B is a 50% retracement of A. Usually, um, wave C is the same length as wave A or a bit more. Obviously, depends on the structure. Nothing is nailed in the wall. Sometimes the rules are meant uh, to be bent. So there are three, three main rules that uh, R.N. Elliott put uh, his accent on, which are the following ones. Impulsive wave three can never be the shortest wave. Wave two can never retrace beyond the start of wave one. Wave four can never cross into the same price area as wave one. These rules, just like all rules in general, are bent sometimes. So don't be afraid to think outside the box and question everything. What I would suggest is that when uh, one of these three rules are broken, then review, uh, a review is needed. It needs to be done. And um, basically, you start counting again. So review your, your things there and see if uh, you should continue or you should just stop. Because sometimes the best decision is to stop. Now, it's time to take all this to the charts. So brace yourselves. Saddle on because we have some writing to do. All right, now, just before we go on the charts to have some live examples on the price action, I would like you to take a close look at the graph shown in the picture in front of you because 
Uh, this is a full cycle, a full Elliott wave cycle. This is for you to have a clearer idea on how it should look like and what patterns to follow. But what I can say is that in real life, it does not look like this. It's not so organized. It's all over the place. Uh, but if you open your mind, learn to adapt and think outside the box, you'll be just fine. So we have here, uh, with the, with the circle around it, this is wave uh, wave number one, the primary one, which is all which is formed out of five uh, five waves, the intermediate. This intermediate is are also intermediate waves are also formed out of uh, other waves, the minors. Minors are also formed out of my, uh, minutes, uh, minutes out of minuets and subminuets, etc. Now, uh, the reason why I'm saying this is that <clears throat> this is what um, Ralph Nelson Elliott um, discovered with uh, the theory that uh, you know uh, waves are the pattern is uh, fractal by nature. So basically, you'll find Elliott waves within an Elliott wave within an Elliott wave, and etc. So basically, we have uh, the first primary wave, then we have the second primary wave, which is a corrective one, two, three, but no, it's not, Elliot wanted to um, differentiate this, um, basically not give it numbers, but letters, A, B, C, because it's corrective. So we should, we can make the difference. Notice that the A is form, A and C are both form of five moves, and the B, which is corrective against the trend, against the trend which has changed there, of course, um, form of three. So, then again, the complete uh, the complete retracement forms wave number two, uh, the primary wave number two, and then all the way up here, same thing towards the wave number three primary formed out of five intermediate waves, and then again the same thing, just like wave number two uh, primary, then four is formed as well, and thus completing the cycle on the upside towards the end of the intermediate wave, but also the primary wave and completing in the same time the first wave on the full cycle. Now, this is when the trend corrective legs uh, are going to be formed. Yeah, just like, just like here, but on a larger scale, we have, uh, the trend has changed here. So notice that um, fifth, uh, fifth, five moves on the downside and then three on the upside. So the trend has completely changed here, only Wave, uh, wave B, a corrective of A, is retracing with three moves. But three moves which are formed out of five on the upside, three on the downside. So notice that once the trend is changing, the corrective always will always uh, give you three legs. Not necessarily all the time, but mostly this is what will happen. Thus, uh, after the full the bearish, uh, bearish retracement, basically, um, on the primary side, right, against the trend A, B, and then C, of course, uh, are completed, then we have the end of the uh, of wave uh, number two on the full cycle. So we have one here, two here, and guess what? This is where it should, it should go here, of course, completing uh, the wave number three on the full cycle. Hello, and welcome to the Elliott Wave Analysis on Gold. Now, first we're gonna uh, we're gonna make a we're gonna have a walkthrough from uh, from the beginning of uh, 2016 until now. So uh, let's see how uh, how the wave structures unfolded so far. So we have here basically, um, and from December, um, gold actually started a bullish cycle. So we have basically the first wave up here, which unfolded as a five-way structure: one, two, three, four. Five and that's this uh, five wave structure. Then we have the uh, bearish divergence right here, which I'm gonna mark right now. Let's change the color. All right, there we go. So, there we go. What happened here basically at the end of the fifth wave? Um, bulls, bulls, they basically ran out of uh, steam, and um, that's what happened. Right, uh, they run out of steam. So basically, price price action move created a uh, high point, then retraced on the fourth wave, and on the fifth wave created a new high point. But then again, uh, bulls didn't have enough uh, enough steam, enough power, so they didn't move enough liquidity in the market to justify this movement. Therefore, the uh, second 
corrective wave which ended right here unfolded as a irregular corrective structure a b which actually formed uh, which actually formed a, um, a false breakout so it moved higher than the previous high point but anyway this is the uh, b wave so um, in some cases it, this is normal not to be alarmed or some things right so we have basically a b c on the second corrective wave and then again <clears throat> the third bullish wave has started and ended here same story like the first wave the bearish divergence appeared on the fifth wave this is an excellent way to trade the uh, the retracements so basically at the end of the third wave which was formed out of uh, five waves as well one two three four and then five of course the um corrective actually uh, the corrective started so we're going to zoom in now and basically here we have a contracting triangle and these levels were very very significant the 1310 levels were very important so what we what we can actually see is both uh, the 1310 and um, 1370 levels were in fact uh, this was the range the trading range until um, until this breakout so basically what happened here we have a contracting triangle gains support the fourth wave basically gained support here fifth wave started creating a new high point then again it started unfolding on the downside on the corrective side so after the third primary wave then we have the corrective structure this corrective structure within this wave four has basically unfolded as a very very complex triple three uh, structure so we have basically a wave W formed out of five moves one two three four five and then after uh, after the finish the bullish divergence appeared right here uh, mul on multiple cases um, I actually uh, followed up with uh, with everybody so you had this trading signal from my side also this one as well now what we what we can see here is basically after the uh, wave uh, W unfolded then we have wave X right a wave x was formed out of uh, out of a complex structure a b c d e which we can see a b c d e right here so this is when x finished but within within this um within this b wave we have another basically a contracting triangle within a triangle within a complex structure so a complex structure within a complex structure so basically we have a b c um, w which unfolded as a zigzag and then as a, as a complex structure again a b c d e which confirmed the x and then five way structure one two three four five uh, which confirmed wave y and then a bullet divergence again starting wave c here from the five moves and then wave wave d right here and wave e completing x now in real time what's happening right now because basically this is what what we're here today for um we, wave y has has basically broke through the this channel line this trend line okay so if i zoom out you're basically you guys are gonna are gonna see the trend lines right here <clears throat> we're gaining support and now this trend line was broken all right so it entered another channel so this this blue blue channel and then this purple channel so we're, we're gonna zoom in here all right so what we have so far is wave one and then two retracement and then wave three unfolded as a extended one so basically extended wave so basically we have wave three right right here down here and then the corrective has started so we have a then b uh, using the fibonacci expansion tool right here we um, we have basically a target for the uh for wave c which will also end wave number four okay so in other words once this uh, once this 38.2 retracement from this uh, from this Fibonacci measuring the third wave will be touched or 100% or even 161.8% uh, percent or 50% on the fibs here <clears throat> mathematical measurements then we should expect if not if not right now because uh, nothing is nailed in the wall um, we have here multiple multiple times price try to breach these levels and it's it's basically unfolding uh, on the bearish side so in other words 
this might be finished or it might continue but what we do know is that we have the upcoming fifth fifth wave right here okay so we're gonna we're gonna mark it mark it here which will confirm wave the y sorry <clears throat> Okay, so once this once this will happen, this will be the point of interest for a buy position. This is where you want to buy on the trend line here for the channel. Also, you would expect a uh, bullish divergence right here. So basically, this is this is the bullish divergence that we're waiting for. In other words, short term gold is a uh, strong sell. Long term, gold will be a buy at uh, at these levels, you wanna you wanna be uh, you wanna be very uh, very careful here, very selective about uh, the levels. What I can say is that good levels will be one two three zero and one two one zero. So one two three zero will be at the 150 Fibonacci expansion tools by measuring by measuring these waves from three uh, basically from uh, from W to um, to X. All right. So by that we we can uh, determine how uh, how long wave um, y can go so once we have the bullish divergence then we're going to have a buy and then of course a strong buy on gold following the elections in the united states as well so technically speaking we're going uh, we're going short for the uh, we're going basically we're selling for the short term but long term we're we're basically are looking to buy gold possibly for the first half of uh, 2017 even so the tre trend will most likely continue just like this this overall trend has started right here this is what we would expect the reason why I'm saying this is it's because wave one was an extended one wave two was a mere correction of wave one when wave three uh, was somewhat uh, limited, uh, in my opinion, it's not, uh, it's not so, uh, it's not big enough. So we should expect wave five to have a lot of uh, power once it starts. So in other words, we're basically shooting for the uh, downside and then buying it at those uh, at those levels one two three zero one two one zero. So the basically this is the point of interest and the sell zone. All right, let me just zoom in so you guys can see. All right, so we have entry entry points um, levels for sell positions one two seven zero and one two eight five. So basically one two seven zero at the one hundred percent Fibonacci extensions by by calculating how much uh, how much higher can wave C go to complete wave four, but possibly one hundred sixty one point eight, which will be one two eight five right here. This is basically the zone where you want to sell. So you have two two options right here. Either you sell it until the buy zone and you take advantage of uh, of this, or you want to be conservative and you want to shoot for a long trade at um, one two three zero and one two one zero. We're gonna we're gonna follow up on this analysis, of course. Be sure to to subscribe and. Um, if you do like it, uh, we'll, we will very much appreciate your feedback. Write us um, or book your book your sessions there. I'm sure that you will get a detailed PDF. So that's it for now. This was uh, this was Richard. Stay in the green and many pips ahead. We arrived at the ending of the basic Elliott Wave module. Hope you enjoyed it and that you found the info useful. Should you need to enhance your trading senses or to perfect your strategy and continue with the advanced techniques, then that will definitely help you. Regardless of the trading league that you are in right now, whether you're a beginner or an advanced trader, our team at Lionheart EWA is more than qualified to provide you with reliable services. Strategy training, private trading sessions, trading signals or alerts, trading room, live trading events, personalized trading assistance, risk management, reliable brokers, partnerships, or even managed accounts. Whatever you're into or whatever you're looking for, be sure that you will find it with us. Register your free account or subscribe for our advanced services at www.lionheart-cwa.com and stand behind the shield. Also book a free session. I would like to thank everyone for the amazing support so far and also thank you all in advance for your upcoming likes, shares or thumbs up.
Thank you for subscribing and joining our trading community. This was Richard Cole, CEO and founder of Lionheart EWA, signing out, stay in the green and many pips ahead.